Scott Brown here. I know I said in the last exciting episode that I'll get back to building, but now we're building a coffee table on wheels. This is the same living room where we did the plywood wall, Pardo and I, and the floating shelf. And they're both looking great, still, all these years later. We renovated this whole house. We did the kitchen, the bathroom, extended out the back. It's all on the channel. I'll, um, I'll chuck a link below. And this is like the last pieces of the puzzle. That laundry was kind of like the last big thing. And we've got some offcuts from the laundry. So the client asked me to make a little coffee table. So this exciting episode, I'm continuing my furniture making. So the plan roughly is to duplicate this one here. But instead of that shoddy MDF, we're going with this beautiful HPL laminate plywood that we used on the laundry. And the layout is slightly changing to look a little bit more like this. This was the original layout here, and this here is what we're going for now. All right, we might need a few things that I don't usually keep in the van. I'll, um, I'll explain what's going on in here in a future exciting episode. Big changes. So, I was trying to figure out how to do the main support the other day. Um, the client doesn't want the same sort of partitions as that coffee table. He wants four in each corner. So, what do we make the corners look like? That's what I was trying to think. The catch is, we're not going to use this um, laminate plywood here. We're going to use the other laminate plywood that looks more like a wood grain. So we might not need to do this mitre. It's going to be edge plywood all the way around the top and the bottom. And also, if that's your corner here, you're going to have edge plywood showing there anyway. And the edge is the same color as the face of the plywood. So having said all that, oh, that's so strong. Having said all that, it's so strong. We're gonna butt the corner. Oh, there we go. Oh, I put a biscuit in there as well. So this is the same material as, as the bench over there. That uh, bench in the laundry that I did is made from this very same sheet. This is the offcut. So I figure because it has this wood grain on it, if I could somehow cut miters in a way that the grain goes around the corner. I'm going back to the miters by the way. I figure it's worth trying. Now the reason I got the Festo out is because I know from experience that cutting miters, wide miters like this, um, I get consistency with this one. Not that I don't get consistency with the Makita 40 volt. I haven't had problems in that regard, but I know this one's good. Plus it gives me an excuse to use it, right? I'm using the tape just to hopefully prevent chipping on the laminate.
Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Biscuit in there, biscuit in there. There you go. Wow, wow, wow. And that's the legs of the coffee table. <laughs> Look at that grain. I think this is gonna work guys. Now this is where the clamps come in. Alright, there's your legs. They should be dry over the weekend. Mm, might need a little bit of gap filler in there maybe. I also glued this one. And this one is like a... It's a test. I want to try something. It's a coffee table, right? So I'm slightly concerned that that edge there you know, when you kick your feet out, maybe your feet's beside the coffee table and you could probably, potentially, you know, cut yourself on the corner, it's a bit sharp. So what I'm thinking is this quarter round bit here, you take the edge off and it might show a bit of that plywood grain, but that could look cool. But I'm doing it on a tester because I'm not sure if it's going to look any good or not. I think this is gonna work. Look at that. I put a bit of this filler here and there, timber mate, and I put a bit of oil over the top of it. It's like the best of both worlds, right? Doesn't interrupt the grain too much, but it takes off that sharp edge so you don't cut your socks. And then I've done the same on this edge here. Now I can do it on all four legs. Are they legs if this thing's on wheels? Uprights, supports. Should I just get on with it? Check it out. The biscuit jointer makes its triumphant return. By no means am I an uh, expert on this stuff, but this biscuit jointer is working a lot better than I would have guessed. It's not being painted, not being sealed, and therefore I can't screw or nail into it and then fill it later. So we're gonna put some biscuits in here. That's gonna be the main way 
that we're going to attach this to those supporting right angle legs. And I had another idea, and we're going to try. I'm going to try it right now. What the biscuit jointer is helping me do is get glue onto surfaces that are attached to both the platforms and the legs that separate the platforms. There you go. So with the biscuits and the glue, it should hold. Next day, Scott Brown here. That glue would have set now. So I'm just calling into placemakers to get some masking tape. I want to seal the edges of the top and the bottom platform um, just so that raw timber doesn't get exposed to any spilt drinks or anything like that that could um, stain the timber, you know? The queue goes around the corner. You can't even see the whole queue. Because we're still in lockdown here, in order to get into the merchant, you have to have a trade account and they check you at the door. And on top of that, there's a material shortage and people kind of rush in here to grab what they can. I'm lucky, I'm just doing cabinet making at the moment, temporarily. I just need masking tape. Anyway, why don't we jump ahead to future Scott Brown and see how this gluing went. So reduce, reuse, recycle. These are the old wheels that were on the last coffee table. So there you have it, plywood coffee table thing. That's, uh, that's my last job here in Auckland for, well, the foreseeable future. And um, not to be a tease or anything, but I'll talk about that in the next exciting episode. Big changes, big changes.